Welcome to the other Mike and Mike show where shoulder dipping is mandatory. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. Listen to me, Mike. Your self-esteem is low right now. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. You know how stupid that sounds? The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Yo, it's time for the other Mike and Mike show, bitches. I'm yes. Mike, I'm Mike W. I'm Mike T. What what episode is this? This is 18. It should be 19, but we failed last week. So we're we're legal. Yeah, we are. We're yeah, we are uh, uh, legal today. We can vote. We can play the lotto. We just can't uh, buy an, an alcoholic beverage in America. No, we can get you know. We can dip. We we can join. You know, we can uh, 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 um, slap, flip, and dip that slap shit. It, flip it, dip it. We can join the military. We 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 uh, can do all sorts of stuff. But you can't buy a beer yet. So I apologize for last week's uh, fuck up for the people that were hitting me up online. It was a disaster. Um, and we were supposed to have Ink Master Jason Clay Dunn on. We will have him back on, right, Mike? He, he said he will come back on at a different date. He said anytime. So I think you know. I think we'll try to set that up for uh, you know because we you know already have some stuff coming up, and I think we'll try to get him on maybe next week's show or you know in the next week or two. I, I don't know about that. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> Soon. So, but thanks for Greg Gay for reaching out to him on on Twitter and getting him. And uh, I, I fucked it up. It was uh, I was a disaster. I went and saw the Cherry Pop and Daddies. I, I haven't been that hungover. You saw the video, right, of my pal Sir Cinco? He has a mess. Oh, destroyed. He doesn't remember even going to the show. Doesn't it's remember not, being but... there. <laughs> has no clue. Has, doesn't know how he got home. And I was a disaster. Not only that, I had the worst. I've had the raging toothache, and I think I've been telling you just the, the horror story about the fucking tooth, so I'll tell briefly. I had this toothache since the last I guess Thursday or Friday, a week ago, and I couldn't get anything on the tooth. Like, any time a water hit it, no matter what the temperature was, it would light you up like a Christmas tree, and the pain would... It came out of nowhere, and I, like, dropped a cup. That's how bad it was. So I went to the... I, like, I struggled all weekend. I had to put my tongue, like, a big Turkish rug over that tooth when I was drinking, because I was drinking. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I got a big-ass tongue, and I'm a big dude. And I was very careful. Even, but once you're hammered, I mean, it hurt. I would scream and drink more. Fuck it. Right. So I went to the dentist first thing, Monday morning. He tells me that the, he takes x-rays. He says, the, whatever, the nerve is shot. I should have fucking pulled it. Hindsight now, I should have pulled it. And he's like, uh, you can either pull it or root canal. So I opted for the root canal. He went in there. It hurt like a bitch, dude. I thought root canal was not supposed to hurt. So I'm sweating, punching the guy, screaming. I mean, I've, I've had abdominal surgeries. I've had a spinal injection with no anesthesia. And I thought that was wrong. This was the worst pain I've ever felt in my fucking life. Yeah, man. Teeth are those 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 are nerves and your teeth are ridiculously sensitive. It's not supposed to hurt. Yes, they are supposed to hurt. That's why they shoot you with Novocaine. But the thing is, is that they can't get they can't shoot the Novocaine into your nerve. So when they drill out your tooth, your nerve is completely exposed. And they're supposed to put like a little bit of gel on it to try to uh, uh, um, like lessen it. But what they do is when they expose the nerve, they kill the nerve. They, like, fucking freeze it, I think, and it kills it. So, like, you got to deal with that real sharp pain when they kill the nerve. Dude, it's not. I'm t- he's telling me it's not supposed to hurt. Oh, and, yeah. Everybody's and, telling me it's not supposed to hurt. And they rip the nerve out, I think. They, they gut the oh, cavity. They, they go in there with this tube and whatever. So it, it, every time he went in there, no matter how many times he shot me with Novocaine, I was ready to kill him. And I was sweat. I had to change. That's how much sweat I had. And finally, I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. And he was like, the worst part's over. Gave me a temporary feeling. It's like, you got to come back in two weeks for, yeah, for, for the step cap two. Cap, right. cap step three. So, like the crown they put on on stage three. So, I have to come back for another, uh, whatever the fuck they do. I have no idea at this point. So, and he said, but once the Novocaine wears off, you'll be fine. You'll be so thanking me that you can eat again. Well, let me tell you, the Novocaine wore off. It was the worst fucking pain. And I couldn't function for like a week. And I'm calling the office. He went on vacation. And I'm like, I have never experienced pain like this where I don't know if it's infected. I don't know what the fuck this guy did. Right. And I was fuming. And finally, they were, they were like, okay, um, come in. When was it? Yesterday. Come in. Uh, this, the, I guess the other partner, the son, was going to be there. So I, I, now I have the second guy looking at it. And he, he, he takes an x-ray. He's like, yeah, I'm not sure what the problem is. It's probably inflamed tissue. I'm going to have to open the tooth up and take a look. I'll clean it out. 
And all I kept thinking was, You have a talent for causing things. Hey, hey. Some be a dance. People will pay you to be inhumane. Your temperament's wrong for the priesthood. And teaching would suit you still. Some be a dance. This fucking dentist opens me up. He's drilling on it for an hour. And it's the same pain, dude. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm sweating. My heart's racing. I, I mean, every time he's pulling on there, hitting that nerve, I'm, I'm pushing the fucking nurse against the wall like the Hulk. And he closes me up after an hour and says, you got to go see a specialist. After they billed me on the week before. A fortune. So I schlep across town, right? I go 17 blocks yesterday, all numbed up. I go see a guy that just does this, and he's like, uh, what's the problem? So they, they, they forward all my information over. Right. He's like, let me, let me get you in the chair. Let me take like, my own x-rays. And he was like, yeah, this, you know, it's not supposed to hurt. I'm like, what do you mean not supposed to hurt? He's like, no, not in today's day and age. It's not supposed to hurt. And he's like, uh, listen, we're going to anesthetize you properly. But he's on now. He's now I'm now I'm with the opposite end of the dentist scale. Like this, he kind of looks like a like Rip Taylor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like Miss Dollar ninety eight Rip Taylor. He comes out and he's just like everything's happy. No pain is pain is not our friend. Pain is our enemy. It's like a Rob Ross had a child with Rip Taylor, right? And now he's the dentist. And I'm telling you, the guy was. He was like, a lot of times you don't know how to uh, anesthetize a patient properly when you're doing a root canal. You have to anesthetize the person properly. And he's like, so there will be a little pressure here. It's not going to hurt. A little pressure, a little pressure. It's going to taste a little funny. And, and like he's, now he's got these things in there. And I, I squirmed a little bit when he, hit the, when he squirted around the nerve and the jawbone. Right. But all of a sudden, it's like um, he comes back in, two more shots. He said, I'm going to drill a little bit. I'm going to take a look. He's like, yeah, this is a disaster. I'm going to put a little bit here. You might feel a pinch for a second. Deep breath. One, two, three. I didn't feel it. He's like, I put it right on top of the nerves. Let's let that settle in. And then, he takes the, then he takes the tube, and some kind of device tells you how long the tooth is. So he pulls out this thing that's exactly the size of the tooth, puts it in there, and he starts pulling the nerve out. I felt it. He goes, yep, that was it. He said, they left all the nerves down on the bottom of the tooth. Oh, disaster. And now he's like, now i got to do it. So I'm in the chair for an hour and a half, and he's taking tissue out of the tooth. And then he goes, let me let that air for 15 minutes. I come back in. He's like, you feeling okay? You need anything? You're all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. He said, let me look at it again. He went back in there. He has the device. He said, all the stuff's out. He went, I mean, he cleaned that fucking thing where he took all the, he said, you had a ton of tissue in that tooth. That's what was causing all the pain. You still had nerves and tissue at the bottom. He's like, uh, now we're going to put medication in there. It's going to be a little funky for like a day. Put the temporary over it, and I'm going to file it down because we're going to put a crown over it. And we don't want your teeth hitting that way. It's raw and soft. And this guy was on point. Right, for sure. And then afterwards, he got up and he gave me, he sat with me. And he was like, "Listen, this is what I need you to do. You don't eat on it." Well, the other guy's like, "You can eat almonds. It's okay." He's like, "No, we avoid that until the crown's in place. Just try to eat soft foods for the next twenty four hours. Eat on the other side, and uh, listen. Let's don't just take the Advil every four hours. Eat it with food so it doesn't screw up your stomach. And if you have any problems, here's my cell phone." He said, "But you won't have any problems." So I go home. I get a phone call at six o'clock last night. Hi, this is Doctor Such and Such. Want to make sure you're okay. Uh, you should not be in any pain now. It might be a little sore. Keep taking the Advil. If you need anything, call me. Here's my cell. Then this morning at 920, he calls. That's amazing. Just want you to know, you know, making sure you're okay. You should be feeling a lot better this morning waking up. Over the next few days, it'll feel better as you go on. Just don't forget that you do have a temporary in there, like come Monday, Tuesday, because we don't want you biting and popping it before we come back in. But uh, you should be pain-free today, and tomorrow you should forget you even have it in there. But um if there is any problem or any pain still, I mean, there's an issue, but there should not be at all. But he's right. There's no pain at all today. Toothache is gone. But the fact that he called me twice, you know what I mean? Well, the other fucking clown just went in there and did a half-assed job and billed me. So now, you know, I'm on the warpath. Now I'm ready to get every attorney I know and freeze their assets. Right, for sure. I mean, that's a great doctor. This, you know, the uh, second one that you went to. And, uh, you know, that's how my dentist is. You know, he's, you know, he's amazing. But uh, that first dentist that you saw, I mean, I would do everything – in my power to try to fuck him. Yeah, I, at this point, well, you know, my wife hates him. <laughs> she's never liked him. She says she's been begging me to go to another dentist. My my kid went there. They said the kid needs a root canal, and she was like, "Fuck you, he doesn't need a root canal." Took him from there to NYU uh, dentist school. Went to the emergency part, and they saw, uh, you know, a doctor comes out with a professor and a student, and they looked at my kid, and they're like, "Nah, he's got a baby tooth coming in from underneath. Uh, he's okay. We numb him up, and we'll pull the baby tooth off." And she's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, kid, you're not going to feel this, you know. And man, he's, the kid at the time was like eight. And the baby tooth was coming in, and the uh, the baby tooth wasn't leaving fast enough for the big tooth. 
So they and numbed the first him up. Said he needed a root canal. Yeah, and then they pulled the little baby tooth out, and next thing you know, he's getting a couple bucks under his pillow with the tooth, and he was fine. He was like, "Yeah, I went to the dentist. I don't know why you're a baby, Dad." <laughs> they were great, and the woman's like, "You don't need no root canal." And this was a this was like a third year dental student, and and this professor, my wife says, the professor says, "What do you think? What's your what's your diagnosis?" But she goes, the "Diagnosis is that adult tooth is coming in. That baby tooth not moving quick enough." He's right. like, "That's what I think." So we're going to give him a little anesthesia. We're going to numb it. We'll give him a little gas to put him in a happy place. And then we'll pull it out, and he'll be good to go. Right. In and out, half hour, and they, no charge. Amazing. Amazing they didn't charge. Well, they don't charge for a lot of that stuff. If it's, They only have a sheet of certain stuff they charge for. But they'll do extractions and root canals for like like a fifth of what you would pay at a normal dentist because you're having a student letting the student do it. Oh, okay. So like if you go there for an extraction or a cleaning, anything, a drill, a drill. They they want you to go there, so it's uh, I, a lot of my relatives go there. Believe it or not, they they live by it because they have the professor standing right there and making sure that the person's on point. Right. So I'm thinking next year I'm just going to scrap my dental insurance and just go there. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't scrap your dental insurance, I would at least scrap your dentist. Oh, the dentist is done because the nuke bomb's coming on Tuesday. Didn't my wife already called and tried to stop payment on the wage works because I now I pay twice for a fucking root canal. Right. Could have went to Florida. <laughs> That they obviously didn't even come close to doing, <laughs> you know, right. like I've been it, paying all fucking week. Thanks, thanks for nothing. Right, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're we're gonna do a root canal, but we're just gonna go ahead and leave the nerves in, and you know, yeah, I'm gonna pack you up. I got a flight to Fort Lauderdale. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I've had a couple of root canals in the last few months, and uh, you know, my uh, my teeth are just jacked up from like, you know, the military doctors were terrible. Uh, they, they, you know, they just didn't properly take care of it. Actually, one of the teeth that I had to get a root canal on was a tooth that I had a root canal done on in the military years ago. Oh, they wow. didn't get it all. And some people say, oh, well, the nerve can grow back, this and this and this. The dentist was just like, no, they didn't. You know, they just didn't do it properly. Right. And like the, you know, the crown fell off and it was just so much pain, man. And, you know, like so like, you know, I feel where you're coming from. Tooth pain. I mean, I think I'd rather break my leg. Oh, I agree. I've had, you know, me with my back problems. Right. And I've had a diverticulitis, and I've had two abdominal surgeries. I told him that. I even told the dentist yesterday, and he only specializes in root canal. So when he was done, I mean, he was grinding and getting that shit. I didn't feel a goddamn thing. And I said, how did you make it so easy when I've been struggling for 10 days? And he's like, first of all, it's all I do. Second of all, I've been doing this for a long time. You can see the awards. He's gotten, like, Dentist of the Year, 2007, State of New York. I mean, the guy was on point. Right. But that's all I do. He said, you should have, should, have, should have, when they told you that, you should have just said, well, I'm going to go see a specialist. You know, either go to an oral surgeon or you go to somebody like me who was, uh, whatever they call it, Enta Dicka Dickus or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But the other place didn't even call to see, did you make it there? Is everything all right? I'm thinking about calling them and just be like, fuck you, fuck you. You know? <laughs> right. I thought about us doing a show on a weekday and crank calling them over and over again and recording it. Because they don't have the number here. I, have, I can use the Skype number. It would be awesome. I'd be like, oh, I'm looking for, and I'll make up a name. And they're like, I'm sorry, that person's not here. Fuck you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then call back and let you talk. Oh, it, it would be epic. He's like, yeah, I was going to give you a Yelp review, and I figured I'd just give it to you in song. <laughs> and just hang up the phone. Awful. Terrible. True. Fucking true. Yeah. No, yeah. For sure. Anyway. I think there's, you know, there's probably more, there's probably more bad dentists than good dentists. Oh my God have mercy. You know what there's a lot we found out le- recently? What's that? Hot, horny, older teachers. Oh, there's a ton of them. And there's repeat offenders. I mean, it's unbelievable. We've talked about this for weeks, and I love that some of the people that now listen to us loyally have asked, any teachers banging kids this week? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Matter of fact, yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, we have already talked about this one. But she decided to continue her actions while she was in court. This is unbelievable. This is this uh, Utah, the former Utah school teacher. Yes. Accused of having sex with teenager students appeared in court Thursday. Breanne Altis, or Altis, she's 35 years old. Pretty hot. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Like, I'm like holy crap. You can't get like a dude with some money your own age. Right. I mean, I just, she could very well. She could very well. But what? So, loves right. the young chorizo? Loves it. She's Loves facing uh, 14 she's, felony charges. Yeah. For sexual relationships with three male students, according to ABC4 Utah. Where is 
Where? What is going on out there? Where's Ryan Bennett? I wonder if Ryan Bennett banged her when he was in school. Our pal from <laughs> used to live out there in Utah, moved to Texas. Utah is fucked. He's like the uh, the geek king, geek revelation, uh, geek rev radio. And I was, I should, I should ask him. Did you bang this uh, Brianne Altus? Yeah, I mean, for a predominantly Mormon state, I mean, they're pretty religious in Utah. Uh, I think if you like look at stats, I mean, it's pretty predominantly Christian and Mormon and everything else. I mean, there, I mean, there's a lot of fucked up shit that happens in that state. Dude, there's just guys with a lot of wives and like cactus. I don't know what else is out there. Right. I mean, you know, that's where the Romneys are from until they fled to Mexico so they could practice polygamy. Mormons, baby. Nothing but Mormons and obviously rape. Yeah. She's she's got five counts of first degree felony rape, two counts of first degree felony forcible sodomy. Uh, first of all, what happened there? I mean, was she did she have like a little device that she was ramming up that thing? Right. Jesus. I mean, shouldn't it be the other way? Yeah. Let that let the kid take over. Yeah. I mean, and what's wrong with that kid? What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, like, what are you, what are you into, and why are you into it at such a young age, and why are you into it at all? I mean, you need more counseling than we think. Right. I mean, if you love things rammed up your ass. Yeah. I mean, you would think it would be her that would that uh, would be taking it and not him. I don't understand that at all. Me either. I mean, I'm all for a little kinky shit now and then. I guess. Yeah. I mean, and what I don't understand is the fact that while she was in court for the charge to begin with, yeah. the uh, relationship continued. Yeah. What is happening there? I mean, she probably I want to fuck you up the ass. <laughs> she probably wouldn't even have gone to jail. She probably would have got maybe some probation, maybe some time served or whatever like that. And, you know, obviously not been able to teach anymore, some fines. And she probably would never have gone to jail. But throughout the course of the court proceedings, she was continuing in the relationship and they found out. So then so now she's going to jail. They said, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, you're going to jail. I, I, I don't get it. And she's kind of high. And it was all these kids. It was like not, not like she was had like this relationship where she fell in love. There was some kind of psychosis psychosis there a psychotic break where she fell in love with like a 15 year old but there was multiple dudes hitting that right like one it says here one teenager in the case testified on thursday saying it's ridiculous she doesn't deserve to be here uh he told the salt lake tribune that the relationship with the teen came to an end in september and that he was arrested and charged with third degree felony witness tampering and retaliation against a witness listen all these kids want to bang this broad of course they're going to say like if it was me you and like a like a 15-year-old Chuck E. Cheats, we're all going to be sitting around taking turns and high-fiving. For sure. I mean, it would be a total circle jerk on her 35-year-old ass. Without question. And our parents would be pissed. If they oh, did. yeah. My dad would have killed her. Right. For sure. So here's that double standard that we, that we talked about a, co- you know, a couple weeks ago. 15, 16-year-old boys hanging out, high-fiving, being happy about it. Parents not being so happy about it. No, I wouldn't be happy about it either. But no. I just don't understand what's in the woman's head. But I, you know what they do teach? They teach you things you never learn in school. Oh, man. I, I mean, you've got to learn from an experience like that, too. And then what happens? Like, there's got to be like a huge dry spell after the hot 35-year-old teacher. Just huge until like prom. It's, it's going to be like a two-year. Right. It's like the, it's like the Sahara Desert. Right. I don't get it. That's what that, to me it would cause more problems. That's where you get like the dog sex and more rape because now the kid has a taste for it. It's almost like when you give uh, an animal the taste of blood. Yeah, he's going to be like forging IDs and going into uh, uh, like adult stores and going into the booths. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you don't get it like a, it's different when you're 16 and you get that first taste of that young 16 poon, but both of you are awkward. And you don't know what the fuck's going on, and you're still learning. But when you have the teacher teaching you. How to how to destroy the little man in the boat and hit it from the back and not catch a hernia? Right, and you know, and let her put things up his ass. Like I don't. Right, I mean, you're getting stretched. Like you're fucked. Next thing you know, your your learning curve is the, the through the roof. You're the top of the bell curve at that point. <laughs> you are the top of the bell curve. You're kicking the door into social studies, dick swinging. You're you can, just the man at that. point. Oh, you are godlike at that point. You're walking and flexing, carrying suitcases and. You know, you're just... It's like you didn't have to show up for school. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. only showing up because you want to dip it. Yeah. I'd probably get a neck tattoo. with. A- <laughs> <laughs> that would go over big yeah. in the state of Utah. Come walking in there, cha cha with like <laughs> bros and hoes tattooed on your neck. <laughs> I mean... 
you got to walk into that classroom. Right. Like, snap. Just doing the running man. <laughs> yeah, doing the running man. Guess what I just did with Miss Jones, Miss Altus. It's getting, it's getting kind of I mean, you gotta be you gotta be godlike in that school. Excellent. I would wear, like I said, I'd wear an Adidas jumpsuit. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> exactly. I'd have a boombox on my shoulder, blasting that song, just coming in, and you're looking like LL back circa 1986. <laughs> yep. Right. Seriously. For you sure. Got, black Pumas on. No, no laces. I mean, you're getting an A for sure. You're getting an A for anal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. You got a B for backdoor. Excellent. Yep. Yep. I can actually picture it now. Like I'm seeing I'm seeing myself rolling in with the Adidas jumpsuit. and. Oh, absolutely. Oh, for sure. I'm looking like a white Al Sharpton, 19, 1982. Yep. Yep. Just like, a, just like that retarded character that hit the editing floor of Fat Albert. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, and honestly, that kid would probably have it pretty easy for the rest of a school career because you can either claim that you're mentally fucked up or you could just say, look, if you don't pass me. Yeah, I got the I'm, video. I'm going to tell everybody that you try to fuck me. Or you did. <laughs> I'm going to tell them to put the blue light in your back. <laughs> There's gun residue. I got gunshot residue all over your tramp step. <laughs> I mean, I wiped the mushroom right off in between the two Easter hams. <laughs> If you hit that with a little blue light, dude, we're all fucking blind. You got to put you got to put the goggles on like you're looking at an eclipse, because the blue light will burn the fucking retinas out in your eyes. That's how much DNA I unloaded on the teacher's back. <laughs> <laughs> you got her at that point, right? Right. <laughs> there's there's that that, that that's not a, that's a win. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's it true. is terrible. I mean, I'd be saving the jeans like Monica saved the dress. Yo, oh my God, are you kidding? I'm saving the dish rag. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you trying to tell me I'm not eligible to play football? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> well, I got Superman underoos. Yeah. You see this? <laughs> With your DNA and my DNA all over it. Yep. This isn't mashed potatoes on my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> this Petri dish screams <laughs> humanities class 101. Yep. And it screams an A plus. You can't go tell everybody that I was you. I was explaining. Um, I'm getting extra credit on my Pollock paintings <laughs> all over your back. Yep, Jackson Pollock, baby. Jesus Christ! And me, Ricky, Ronnie, Johnny, Ricky, and Mike spraying our DNA anywhere we like, and it's all over your back. Your I'm back just is just, just, just disgusting. It's disgusting. It is. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. It's true. It is. It is true. Wow. Yeah, it's like, right. But, but seriously, like, what's in her mind? Like, what's going through her mind? Dick. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but 15-year-old dick. I mean, there's a difference between a 15-year-old and a 30-year-old. And the parts of his penis start hitting the parts of her vagina walls, harmonizing them, making them sing. And so she feel like she's in church jumping and shouting because that man hitting them walls like she needed him to hit them walls. <laughs> I mean, that's it. That is. That's it. That's it. It's like you bring him over for extra credit. He's, you're looking at each other. It's kind of awkward. He's 15. You're 35. So I'm ready whenever you are. And there you go. <laughs> exactly. What's the largest thing you've ever placed in your anus? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't get it. No, me either. I really don't. But I'm loving it. I mean, if I after like one or two visits, you you're it's like, just like we were saying, you're walking in the house, right? And you went from being awkward to just full fledged. Oh, I'm ready just to just destroy it. Even if you suck at football, they may make you the captain of it. They're, you're captain and quarterback. The captain of everything. I'm the most powerful motherfucker in the goddamn world. Oh, you don't wrestle? That's okay. Captain. Captain. Captain, you run this team. As a matter of fact, just coach it. You're the coach. And what do you think about Miss Altus? I want to dip my balls in it! (laughs) (laughs) 
One slap, you're going to love my nuts. Yeah. It's true. It is true. It, it oh, is true. Oh, my God. And then, you know, his friends are like, are you really banging Miss Altus? Come on, dude. I don't believe that. Now, you you know, you're, you're like smoking now. You're on like a two-pack a day Marlboro habit. <laughs> you're going to class the sunglasses on because you're probably blowing a three. You get the pack of cigarettes rolled up in your left sleeve. <laughs> right. You're looking like Snyder for one day at a time. <laughs> you let the pencil mustache grow in. And, oh, you just, and yeah. the only advice you tell your friends is... Uh, you're in more dire need of a blowjob than any white man in history. <laughs> That's it. Yep. That's like G- the only thing he's up with black boots on. Wow. Okay, so uh, I have a couple clips here from Miss Altus. You want to hear them? Sure. This is uh, how she addresses the class. You naughty, naughty boy. And then, like, when she's teaching extracurricular activity. You pull my face closer to your massive erection. (laughs) It's the best class ever. Uh, Is there a problem, Miss Altus? You're so fucking turning me on, baby. (laughs) That's the only clips we could get from her, but uh, there you go. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, what else we got going on? I got a couple things. Uh, we're going to... Are we doing a separate show this week? Are we doing two shows? Will we miss a show? What are we doing? I don't remember what we decided. Yeah, no. We're going to do two um, shows this week. Okay. So, uh, All right. So we're going to do another one after this, uh, hopefully with uh, Kevin comedian Bart- Kevin Bartini. Yep. So that should be good. We apologize for missing the second show. So uh, we have a couple other things I want to talk about here. I do have a Canada story I'm going to talk about briefly. I want to continue with the news one new story that you sent me had this. What is this? You got to explain this to me. There was these circular, glowing UFOs performing maneuvers in Massachusetts or something. Are you sure it's just not like Boston? It's just a weird place. No. It was, it, like I accidentally came across it. I was out on the Huffington Post. I was looking for some, you know, funny, cool stories to maybe just talk about and make fun of people. Okay. You know, and um, is it true? I mean, did you? Is there anybody else reporting it besides Huffington Post? I Googled it. I Googled UFO in Boston and, and, and no major sites other than the Huffington Post popped up. Um, I mean, it was posted this, this morning, 930 in the morning. But I mean, I don't see places like CNN and Fox like reporting it, anything like that anyways. You know, I really don't because you never see it. No, you know, no matter how legitimate the footage looks. Right. You, you, you don't really see news stations like that reporting about ufos but this footage from boston i mean it looks i mean these kids i mean the kids don't sound very intelligent you know i mean i'll post the video out on our facebook page and then you can let us know what you think but like the kids themselves they sound like they're morons and they don't sound like that they have the ability to forge video understood so i mean i would find it fascinating Uh, ever since you talked about that story with uh about if there's life on whatever it was, one one millionth, of, whatever the hell the, the number was, that, that means there'd be like three planets in our galaxy with life. Yeah, three planets in every galaxy. Right. Now, now listen, anybody that's like toked up a little bit or uh, did a little self-medicating and then you, you're like two o'clock in the morning and you're either you're lonely, you don't have a significant other and you're just like you're in a dry spell or you have a significant other and the red dragon's flying around like it's uh, and you don't want to be Dragon Slayer. <laughs> and, and it's two o'clock in the morning. And you put on Netflix and you're self medicating and you watch Cosmos. Yeah, with the uh, Ted Lang guy. What's it? What is that? That guy, Neil. Neil Degrassi. Yeah, Degrassi High. Yep. And he starts showing you the different galaxies and how there's different life. There could be life here, and how he wants to go to Europa and dig into the one of the moons in Jupiter yeah. and dig and look what's under the water there. It's all of a sudden you start fucking mind fucked. For sure. I mean, even this video from Boston, I mean, it's a big glowing globe in the sky, and it lo- looks like it's almost like shitting out smaller globes. And, like, they all line up, and, like, all five of them line up in a perfect line underneath the big globe. It's strange. It's crazy. We're dead. You know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I'm not saying this footage is real, because obviously I don't know. I can't, you know, say, oh, I guarantee the footage is real, blah, 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 blah. We're being attacked by aliens. But it's a pretty convincing video. It doesn't look, you know, there's a lot of UFO footage out there that looks pretty bad, right? Like you can tell it's a weather balloon or somebody's just giving you fucked up angles on a camera, right? Right. But this footage, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty legitimate to me, you know, and the and the reaction of the people recording it sound legitimately surprised. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, we'll post that up there. Check it out. I'd be curious what everybody else thinks. Is this real? Do you want to you? Does, do you think there's people out there? Yeah, I want. I want to know. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. It is a little, uh, a little unnerving. A little, little strange. It is. It's weird. 
you know, it fucks me up, you know, a little bit to think that, you know, because I'm going to tell you what, you know, it's. No, it's nuts. And now the more I'm watching Cosmos, dude, this is like totally freaking me out. Right. Like, I don't think they would be here to make friends. No, I think they're here to ramp stuff up your ass like a teacher in Utah. Yes. Yes. I think they, you know, I mean, I think they would be here to fuck our day up. Yeah. Put something right in your prostate and mind meld like Spock. Yeah. One other, qu- one other thing we want to do before I want to tell my story, and I know we got about uh, 10, 10 minutes here to wrap up. Um, the new story here, this guy, I'm going to play the clip. I'll just play the clip, and then we'll discuss it. This guy is from Wigan, W-I-G-A-N, England, and he's now, a sta- a, now he is stamped as a sex offender, and uh, his name is Paul Bennett, 45 years old, and this is why. Today we head to the other side of the pond, where a Manchester man was arrested after he was caught having sex with a mailbox. What kind of person has sex with a mailbox? Oh, I f***ed the sh** out of that letter, ho. Say hello to 45-year-old Paul Bennett. He's a drunken cross between Popeye and Jason Statham who enjoys long walks on the sidewalk and sticking his dick in the mailbox. It's my dick in a mail box. According to reports, Bennett was first arrested for fornicating the correspondence cave in September when he allegedly pulled down his trousers and started yelling the word wow as he placed his hands into a star position over his head and started rubbing himself all up on that sexy envelope castle. What the f*** is the star position? Disgusted by his public display of postal penetration, a shock shopper reported the lewd act to local police, who then approached the man, who by that time was lying on a sidewalk bench, exposing himself to those who walked by and yelling at the top of his lungs. (laughs) Who wants to cover my dick in stamps? (laughs) <laughs> this month, Bennett pleaded guilty to two charges of indecent exposure and was sentenced to a 12-month community order, alcohol treatment, 260 pounds in fines and court fees, and he's also required to register as a sex offender. Oh, uh, yes, hello, miss. Uh, I'm your neighbor, Paul Bennett, and by order of Her Majesty, I am required to tell you, by law, that we're going to be doing some work on your mailboxes this afternoon. So whatever you see happening outside your window, don't be alarmed. It's all in the name of the crown. And just standard practice, maintenance procedures as such. Um, do you have any petroleum jelly or Vaseline I could borrow? Oh, uh, that's too good, man. Yes. That's too good. So the guy, obviously, he's having sex in a mailbox, and that's just the most bizarre thing in the world. Although it's better than having sex with kids. It is. But why do people always choose random objects? Like, why? I don't know, man. It's just, just don't get bizarre. It. Like, bizarre. it's the real thing. It's so much better. We always talk about the comments. And it's showing you here on the bottom, like, other people that have been arrested. Michigan woman Sadie Bell convicted in April of, the, of 2014 for shooting her lover because he didn't produce enough ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Barbara Hall was involved in a bedroom romp with a boyfriend when he asked if he had brought Pam. And she. Uh, if she brought Pam cooking spray because he wanted to use it as a lubricant, he thought she thought that he meant his ex-girlfriend Pam and went into a jealous rage and beating him about the head with objects. I mean, I'm looking at all these things here. There's be weird people out there, man. There are. Having caught having sex with a couch on the side of the road. Now, I will tell you that I did have sex with a couch once. <laughs> I will not lie. I think I told that story before. If I didn't tell it here, I told it on the clown table years ago where I was banging some broad in my youth. And the parents pulled up in the driveway, and she hopped off right at that point of no return. And the, uh, you know, if that couch could have a love seat, nine months later, something's popping out of there. An easy boy chair or something, but it had to go somewhere. Nothing better than velour cushions in an old colonial home. And I'm running out the back door with my big white ass, making sure that dad, the mechanic, didn't get me. Right. Whew. And they pulled in the driveway, and he was just like, what do you do? I'm sure. What do you do? I mean, at, at that point, there really is no options besides just... That should be legal, right? It's not like I started and finished with the couch. I started and was about to finish, and the parents broke it up, so I finished with the couch. So to me, that's perfectly legal. There was one time the same thing happened. I finished with the curtains. Yeah, I think that gives you a, a, a pass. I think, you're, I think you're okay there. You're, you're safe. I was a coffee table away from a whole living room set. <laughs> I've never completed the trifecta. I've gotten two out of three. Little mini nightstands rolling around now because of you. That's it. Win place. I didn't get the show. Yeah. That's another place you don't want to hit with a blue light. I hope they moved. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. That's, that's a couch that you do not want to get from the Salvation Army. Maybe they moved to Utah. Yeah, maybe they moved to Utah and ramming stuff up kids' asses in like social studies. Never know. Anyway, so we've got a couple minutes here. I'm going to tell my last story. I promised a pal of mine, uh, John Beckett, that I was going to tell the story about The Art of Noise. You know the band The Art of Noise? 
I've heard of them. Very weird. Trevor Horn, he produced the old albums. He was uh, in the Buggles. Okay. But there's, they have a legion of folks that go in and out. J.J., Jizalek. I don't even have the thing in front. But I was really into them for a long time. They did a song with, uh, uh, what was it, Max Headroom, that Paranoma song. They had a song that guys would break dance to back in the day. And it was, you know, it was one of those bands that's just like all sin weird stuff, though. It's not something that you could put on and be like, yeah, we're at a dance party. You put it on, it's coming to a dead halt. Right. And Dudley plays piano. And it was back in the 80s where that stuff was, it was cutting edge. You know what I mean? And... Uh, John was asking me for, I don't know what it was. I was telling him, you want, if you're looking for something to relax, you put on the Ambient Collection by Art of Noise. That's my thing. And I turn the lights out. And I have a story. Of, like People ask. And my wife's like, how did you ever start listening to this crap? And I say, first of all, it's not crap. First of all, it has its place. It's just not something you'd put on when you're entertaining. Or, you know, it's, it's to me, it's like chill Ambient music. If you're trying to fall asleep, that type of thing. And there's some stuff in there that you couldn't fall asleep to. That's just, it'll give you nightmares. You know, it's like seeing the Pennywise. <laughs> just in a music form. So the story was is that I was a teenager, right? So you can picture me. I was uh, 17, going on 18, and I'm in the back of a bus on a school trip, right? And we're going to Canada, and I'm, we were going to, like, Quebec. And that's a long ride from New Jersey, right? going to Quebec City. And going there, it was a great time. It's one of those times in life where, you, you know, you remember when you were, when you're like, at, like, 16, 17, 18, right? You'd, like, get into girls, and your whole world starts changing. Everything you see is, like, uh, you're like Johnny Five, Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? From uh, Short Circuit, where it's right. like input. All of a sudden, you start learning about stuff, and the next newest thing, your eyes get wide like saucers. You're like, wow, where has this been all my life? Like the first time I heard WFAN, and they were talking about sports 24 hours a day, and New York Ranger guys were coming on. I'm like, wow, where was this? This is amazing. <laughs> but that's what this was like. So I went there, and the dollar at the time was much stronger than the Canadian dollar. It probably still is. I don't know what they deal with up there. Like, uh, I think they're close to even now, though, to be honest with you. Are they really? Oh, yeah. Our our dollar is terrible. Trash. Trash dollar? Yeah, trash dollar. Uh, but I guess it had a weird symbol. Whatever the symbol was, I don't even know what the Canadian dollar is. I'm a dope. But I was in, and everybody spoke French in Quebec. And the city was beautiful, but their old people were fucking annoying. No offense to the, the French Canadians, but fuck them. I'd rather go like to Manitoba, where people are like an A, or let's bang a moose A. Yeah, and they sound like they're from North Dakota. Right. Anyway, so I bought. So I'm looking at some albums, and it was cheap. So I'm thinking, okay, I can buy a couple albums up here. My dollar's strong, and I'm a teenager. You want your dollar to go a long way. So I was buying shit left and right. You know what I mean? And I bought the Art of Noise, uh, and I bought the album Invisible Silence. And you got. And while I'm on the trip, there was a girl. I'm not going to name names, but there was this girl that I had a crush on for a while. And we, we, you know how you're a kid. You snitly, we got somehow somebody got some brandy, which we're drinking like the. Uh, in the hotel, we're in the, the whatchamacallit, where the stairwell is, where it says sortie, which was exit. And I remember we were yelling sortie and all this stupid stuff as kids do. You know, you act like a fucking child, and then you're trying to impress the girls, and you're acting like a dope and trying to jump down the stairs like an idiot. You, you, you remember what we did back then? Absolutely. Smoking Dutch treats until the fire alarm went off, and we all ran. <laughs> a bunch of retards. And it was before like a lot of laws were in place due to terrorism and everything else because we were just total morons starting fires. and You know what I mean? Just, to- just total animals. Looking yes. back now, it's embarrassing. But somehow or another, I was working on her the whole fucking... She was kind of whorish. And I'm thinking, man, she's fucking hot too, but she only dates like college guys. And we were all working on it. And I don't know what happened, but coming home, I'm in the back. And I was like, you know, wanted to be a little cooler than everybody else. So I had to sit in the back and that... There was like a three-seater next to the bathroom. I didn't care if people would get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom on that bus ride. And I'm listening to The Art of Noise. And I'll, just to give an idea of what this was, here's a little clip from what I, the first time I heard it. And I know it's strange. It's not for everybody. But this is what I'm listening to. So if you could put yourself in a bus ride from Quebec to the New York City, New Jersey shore area, long ride, pitch black, everybody's sleeping, and this is what I'm listening to. I'm committed to maintaining law, order, and stability in our country. I have already given instructions for appropriate steps to be taken to restore and maintain law and order. A little weird, right? Is lit. 
But you get the idea. It's a little. It's a little strange. It is right, but it, but when you're like, I'll, I'll fast forward a little bit here. So if you're, so as a teenager in a pitch black dark, you know, hormones change and everything else. This was something to me that was very cool, something different that I never heard before, <clears throat> and it was so relaxing. It put me in such a relaxing state. You know what I mean? Right. Meanwhile, this girl comes to the back of the bus and is sitting next to me, and we we were kind of cozy. And I had one of those plug-ins where you can listen to two people can put headphones in at the same time. You were the Mac if you had that back in the 80s. Absolutely. I was the fucking Mac daddy with that thing. And, I, you know, at that moment, you're tired. I hadn't sleep. And, you know, you can be up for like 48 hours back then. And it doesn't affect your health like it does today. And next thing you know, her hand went and we were kissing. Hand went in my pants. And then the dingus came out in the back of the bus. And for that day ever, I've loved Canada. 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 <laughs> That's all I heard when my when my DNA released all inside the uh, the sweatpants I was wearing to be comfortable in the back. Canada, my Canada, Canada. You're a lifeline of wonder on this planet Earth. <laughs> so that that's my art of noise Canada story. And the great and the story. HJ. Great HJ. It was like probably the best HJ you'll ever get. Because <laughs> the girl was hot, you had the crush on her. I'm listening to the art of noise and just releasing all over the back of the fucking bus. Canada, Canada, my Canada. It's like my whole load sang that as it came out of the tip. <laughs> it probably woke in my mind now that it's like so many years later. I think it woke up the bus, the DNA coming out singing that song. Jeez, terrible, right? Filthy, <laughs> terrible. Anyway, so that's the. I'm going to leave you on a happy note. <laughs> Um, so thanks for tuning in. Check us out at theothermike.com. Follow all our stuff. You know the same old shit. Hit us up. Sorry we missed the show last week. We will reschedule him, and uh, hopefully we talk to uh, Kevin Bartini. We'll post that up as well as the second show. Yes. Uh, anything I missed this week, bitch? Nope. We're good to go. All right. Uh, until next week, I'm Mike W. I'm Mike T. Slap that shit, bitches. <laughs> Where's the beat? Where's the beat? Hey, where are the white women at? Oh, I miss you. Come on. Did you come yet? Your agony must endure forever. Did you come yet? Your agony must endure forever. Did you come yet? Did you come yet? I trust you didn't lose sleep over it. Your balls are showing. Did you come yet? Your balls are showing. Did you come yet? You pull my face closer to your massive erection. Your balls are showing. You're so fucking turning me on, baby.